Hi, I'm Dennis Weiss. I work for Eagle Communications. Welcome to our town. We're at our very favorite place. We're at Dwight David Eisenhower's house in Abilene. This is the Eisenhower Presidential Library, Museum, and Boyhood Home with Don Hammett, the Executive Director. And we're going to talk about the future because the future is fun. Welcome. I'm glad you're here today. Thank you. Glad to be here. Always glad to be here if for any reason at any time. So, but with a camera, with the we camera. get to talk. Yes. And uh, it's graphic between us here, the wall here between us is really uh, the, gives us a format to talk about the renovation of 2018 and all the terrific things that are coming for the museum facility That's right. to, to be here in Abilene. So first of all, but how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. All right, I like Ike, you like Ike, we all like Ike, We're right here. Okay, so tell us, 2018's a big year. It is. Renovation doesn't seem to really capture the essence of what y'all are gonna do over there to me. Reinvent almost seems better. Uh, We're using new, the word redesign. I don't redesign. know if that works for you, but. Oh, it'll work for me. Works for you, you're the boss. So let's talk about redesign. Okay, so what we're doing is we're planning a redesign of our exhibit spaces in the museum building. Um, we have new information available to us over the past few years as, as more classified materials have been uh, declassified. Mm -hmm. So we have new scholarship uh, we can use to create newer exhibits. There's new exhibit technologies available to us now. And uh, frankly, the thing that I'm looking forward to is bringing this story to a new group of people um, mm -hmm. perhaps changing uh, the didactic nature of it to meet the needs of a new group of people. It sounds like reinvent to me. You can say reinvent. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it just sounds wonderful. <laughs> it just sounds wonderful because, you know, I have a little inside hint on what you're talking about here. So, but I'm just so excited about what you're doing. So start us out. We've got the graphic of the building, but Many of our watchers will have been through the, ex the existing building and the, and the exhibits that change all the time, but this is fundamental change. Absolutely. This is a, just the layout of the exhibit has changed, um, and really one of the major features is this new central corridor with a new bathroom. And that, this in itself changed the entire structure of the exhibit space. And we're going in the other way now. Exactly. So now when you enter the lobby, the exhibit space starts on the right and you do a counterclockwise mm -hmm. rotation. But now you'll enter in the left and do a clockwise rotation. Okay. So, you know, every time you work inside a building, an older building, and this is an older building, uh, you get the chance to fix some infrastructure things. And it looks like you're doing that with upgraded bathrooms in the central corridor. But I, the topic for interest for me is the different ways that you're reaching out to people as you go through the rooms and how you're following Eisenhower's life around. Exactly. So give us a view of that, a, a virtual Don Hammett sure. tour. Sure. Well, please remember that this is still fairly conceptual and as we get down to the details, things may change. Um, but conceptually, this is what we're sticking with. Okay. Okay? So when you enter the exhibit space, the first gallery will be, I come from the heart of America. We all know that Eisenhower was very proud of being from Abilene. Mm -hmm. um, this is where his family started. And, um, and I personally believe that the things that he learned while he was here in Abilene really led him to be the man that he became. So his life here in Abilene is very important. Um, we're, in this gallery, we're gonna have information about his family members. All of his brothers went on to be exceptional, exceptional men in their fields. And um, we'll be able to talk about his mom and his dad and how they, what they did to create this man and this family from, from this hometown. It's really a, an amazing story. The, the, the boyhood home is here and you can go take a tour of the boyhood home and you'll still be able to do that after this is completed. Absolutely. But this sounds like to me that we're giving people glimpse inside that boyhood home with the first exhibit here. Exactly. Of who those people are, what they did, how they grew up and what they became. Exactly, yeah. that's exactly right. And you know, the story that we can tell a story in this gallery about Ida and what Ida did to teach her boys the things that she felt necessary that they needed to learn to move on in life. And I just, I'm really interested to see the content and how that develops. Well, that sounds like a great place to start a story about Eisenhower, doesn't it? His, his, his boyhood family experience. Mm -hmm. You know, his mother, that, that's a unique story. We should do a Why Like Ike sometime about his mother. 
I think that would be a great She's story. a fascinating woman. Yeah, a lot of things people probably don't know. Probably. Okay, so what's next? So when you move on, um, this section clearly is going to be a military section, his early military life. He and Mamie become married. Um, and now we can start telling the story from two points of view. One's from Mamie's and one's from Ike's. Um, Mamie had a clear uh, role, an important role in the relationship and in the development of, of Ike. Some people have said if it weren't for Mamie, we wouldn't have had the Ike that we had. Um, she was a very important person mm -hmm. in his life and helped him uh, quietly uh, in his progression along his path, his career path as well. So we get to talk about um, them being in Panama and that mm -hmm. she had to chase bats out of her house and she did not like that. Neither would I, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, but while, while she was doing those sorts of things, he had these exceptional educational opportunities with the leaders of those places where he was stationed. Right. So we'll talk about that. Um, and then we move on into the World War. World War II was clearly global. Um, and I don't think that we always understand that it was a global war. So in this area, if you see that circle down at the bottom, right there, that is actually gonna be a 3D globe. <gasps> I'm so excited about that. With projections on the inside of it, mm -hmm. which will show, um, which will be a graphic representation of a global war. Mm -hmm. We'll have information running around it about uh, the progress of the war, how many troops were in battle, where the troops moved, um, dates, specific dates. So this is gonna be uh, a graphically interactive visual tour of why this was a world war. I can just see legions of children to young adults stopping there and watching that. I can too, and I'm a visual learner, so um, I don't always read things, <laughs> but that will be good for people like me who learn from watching something. One other comment. Um, you know, we've always, as long as I've been involved with the, with the museum and the library, there's always been a Mamie section. Yes. But it, I've never seen it presented as Ike and Mamie, and certainly not what Mamie's partnership with Ike did for the Absolutely. general and president. What a phenomenal opportunity to tell the rest of the story. Absolutely, we had um, the committee who's been working on this concept has been working for going on two years perhaps. And the committee members were very adamant that this was an important tale, an important part of the legacy, and they're correct. Not only is it important, but we have the content to be able to produce the, 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 the storyline. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be fun to learn. Uh, from even people who think they know, right? It will be. It'll be fun because that's what museums do. They tell you and show you things mm -hmm. in a way that we don't have access to on exactly. a regular daily basis. So, you know, go as wonderful as Googling things are, it's not the same as standing in front of an interactive exhibit of artifacts, ideas, exactly. words, pictures, and explanations of how this moved. Uh, young Dwight David Eisenhower married young up did. through the ranks of camp, his life in Camp Colt and World War I and all of that. that that's just a tremendous story, lots of stories. There. I agree. I mm -hmm. agree. And that, to me, that's the magic of museums. Yeah. No dinosaurs after the light goes off. It's magic during the day when you're here, <laughs> right. right? That's the real magic. Okay. So where America goes to war. Then you walk through the little doorway and we are at the invasion of Normandy. The, you see the table on right. the graphic? That's the D-Day planning table, which yes. I know gives you chills. It does. In fact, I just cooled off for the first time in this interview, so I'm... You ready to talk about the D-Day table? Yes, I am. Yeah. Um, so that is the D-Day planning table. That is where our leaders, our military leaders, sat and uh, developed the concept of the D-Day invasion. Um, I, we talk in-house about what, con what conversations happened around that table, mm -hmm. who sat at the table, what, who raised their voice, who, you know, threw papers across the table, things like that. Just the human element of what mm -hmm. happened at that table is spectacular. Yeah, yeah, and, and I'm going to skip my favorite line because we're on TV. So, but this is the table that Eisenhower would have walked away from muttering under his breath a time or two. Uh, that, so I, without that, a doubt. That's my, that's my word picture for what I'm actually thinking, okay? So with, without a doubt, that table represents a physical artifact yes. that is central to the world that we live in today. Absolutely. Yeah, I think if there's one artifact that's undoubtedly 
the place. That's it, that artifact right there. If it hadn't been for that invasion, we would be living in a much different world. Mm -hmm. However, if you move along on the, in the exhibit space, uh, you come to our Mulberry Harbor. And if it hadn't been for the, su the continued exactly. supply, <laughs> Exactly. After the invasion, we still would have had a problem. Yeah, the Mulberry Harbor. That could be, you could have a museum with, you know, for young boys. I, I would love to play with the it. The Mulberry, and young girls, <laughs> for the Mulberry Harbor. Uh, that should ignite creativity. There's, exactly. That's, that's an artifact that that thing did not exist before this action. Well, I think from, you know, from a perspective of a high school education or a high school mm -hmm. uh, history class, we don't necessarily talk about the supply after the mm -hmm. invasion. We talk about the invasion and then the continued movement of troops, but we don't talk about supplying those troops um, in a class. So this right. to me was a, is a really interesting concept that not only do we have to get our troops to the shore and up the cliff, but we have to continue mm -hmm. getting gas in and continue getting food right. in. Yeah, the, the, the genius, uh, uh, maybe we're comfortable talking about war and being excited about things because of what, because we, of what we do who, what we do and who we are, right? Not, not to say that war is good, no. and I don't want to come across that way, but I do want to be clear. The genius of creativity involved from Dwight David Eisenhower's team that he led here, Absolutely. you won't find a better example. Um, it doesn't matter whether you look at the later things he did in life with NASA and all of the interstate highway and anything else. This operation and the supply chain behind it, mm -hmm. it, it, it's it, genius. it makes the pyramids look like just a you know, playground building job. It, to me. It was, it's fascinating if you mm -hmm. think about it from that point of view. Yeah. My son would quickly, uh, if he were here, he would, he would make sure that I would say that it's those deuce and a half trucks mm -hmm. and those M1 Garands that, and, and the ammunition for them that were coming on, landing on the harbor and then up on the beach and in through Normandy and through France. Mm -hmm. That's the reason we won the war. And the airplane factories home with Rosie the Riveters building right. airplanes. My grandfather built Higgins boats. Oh, really? Yeah. No kidding. Absolutely. Well, that's a story we should do sometime. <laughs> you know, everybody's got one if you dig Absolutely. far enough because we're Americans. Absolutely. My husband's grandfather wasn't drafted because he made um, fuel. Uh, so he was in a, an important industry. My yeah. grandfather built Higgins boats. It was it's fascinating. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited. So uh, we, I probably diverted this on the Mulberry no, Harbor. we're fine. And uh, so you can, we, we're about right in here. Yep. So what we're gonna talk about in this section is the Holocaust and the atomic bombs. Mm -hmm. um, Eisenhower, as you know, mandated that people go into the concentration camps to see what yeah. happened. Yeah. He said that he didn't want people to forget it and he didn't want people to ignore it. Mm -hmm. And you know this, it was horrible and we all hate watching those videos. Mm -hmm. But if it weren't for his insistence on this, we wouldn't know the atrocities that occurred. We wouldn't know to avoid them in the future. I don't know whether it was a, a letter uh, to Truman or to Marshall, I forget, but I, I saw a copy of it here one, one day and r was reading it and uh, 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 the tears didn't fall out of my eyes, but they were, I they were had, right there. I had to push pretty hard. Uh, and the words that Eisenhower said was because I, why he went to the concentration camp. He said, because he wanted to testify that I saw. Mm -hmm. So there was no doubt. And you think about, well, who would doubt? Well, look at the news today. There are lots of people who politically doubt the Holocaust. But uh, Mr. Eisenhower, if in fact uh, one can believe the witness of Mr. Eisenhower, and we can, he went there to be able to say, I came, I saw, and this is what this it was. Is what, this is exactly what happened, I agree. Yeah, yeah, again, not many people would have chosen to do that. No, that must Supreme have been extraordinarily Allied difficult. Commander. Yeah, yeah. So we end that space with his quote about hating war as only a soldier can, mm. um, which I think is incredibly insightful. Yeah. So, you, so we can all hate war, but he saw it in a different way. Yeah, yeah, very much so. Um, and then once we move from the war section, we move into the campaign. Uh, this section right here, see the little, the little dots on the mm -hmm, ground? The little, mm -hmm. What that's going to be is a projection. I'm really excited about this. It's a projection of all the little I like Ike and I like Mamie buttons. Oh, really? And it's going to project on the floor and just oh, show the, cool. the overwhelming political support that they had during this campaign, campaign time. 
Um, so that'll be fun. And frankly, uh, here at the Eisenhower Library, we get to tell two stories about our president. And so to move from this incredible World War military career story into a presidential story um, is, is fascinating to me and exciting for all of us. Uh, another time to talk about Mamie. Right. Uh, the partnership was a partnership. I have heard it said behind uh, political discussions that without Mamie that first election maybe not had ended so well. Well, Mamie was really quite intelligent and thoughtful and the things that she did um, to support Ike and his his candidacy uh, was very insightful. She was she was an independent woman. She um, she had a very traditional role, which is kind of funny because she didn't cook. Mm -hmm. She did the finances, so it wasn't completely traditional. But she had a very traditional, I am the homemaker, I take care of the home attitude. However, she was also very much a feminist because she believed in another woman's right to have another path. Mm -hmm. She believed you follow your path, and that was that's feminism. You know, isn't that the heart of American individualism? Absolutely. You know, you take all the current politics aside, isn't that what American individualism is? You're an individual. Absolutely. I'm an individual. We each could choose, don't we? Right. And, and she you and she supported my that. Support and right. I deserve your support. That's but again, we have the story of Ike and Mamie, you know, so president and first lady, first extraordinary lady. story. So we move into this little section up there, little semicircle section. Mm -hmm. That is uh, Mamie's gallery. Okay. Um, so that will look different. It'll feel different. It'll be Mamie's pink and green, the colors that she loved to, de okay. to decorate with. We'll be able to rotate her clothing. We have a lot of her clothing, a lot of her hats. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll get to really talk about the things that she did to support social diplomacy, to support, um, you know, a new, a new way in the White House. Okay, very good. Uh, so we're right here. Hmm? Yep, that's right. Okay, so we're moving on. It we're says waging, waging peace. Waging peace. So Eisenhower's um, presidential foundation, if you will, was on waging peace. Uh, he said that we needed to do everything we could to avoid war. War was that bad. Mm -hmm. We need to avoid it. So in this section, we get to talk about all his diplomatic missions, all of his, um, his um, the diplomacy that he involved he and his staff in to um, control communism. He was very, they were all very concerned about the um, expansion of communism. Um, and it was, honestly, for me, when I look back into the 50s, I sort of see Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley and Poodle yeah. Skirts and, you know, mm -hmm. Chubby Checker. But it was actually a very scary time with yeah. uh, the atomic bombs and uh, communist expansion and things like that. So this is these stations. We have several stations where we can talk about the things that he was working on to ensure our safety and our peace and our prosperity. I think, again, there's repeating what we're saying here, but about different times of history. But this is an unparalleled opportunity to show the Eisenhower administration for what it was, which was, okay, eight years of peace and prosperity. That's what we all, Laverne and Shirley side, Absolutely. eight years of peace and prosperity. The reason we had eight years of peace and prosperity is because we were not in a hot war with the Russians or no. the Soviet Union. And that's the other half of the story. That's the Cold War. It's uh, this far from being a hot war during Absolutely. the Absolutely. And who stood there to keep it from being a hot war? And that's, that's the Eisenhower administration. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And then one of the things that um, I'm personally looking forward to is talking about civil rights. So civil rights is actually a little bit further along in the okay. exhibit. But, you know, as a Southerner, the civil rights movement is uh, still very important. And actually, that's the, that's the crux of the importance to me, is that all of these concepts, all of these topics are still relevant, are still important, are still things that we yeah. deal with. Yeah. And that's fascinating. It is fascinating. That's what museums are supposed to be, right? Exactly. It is, is an opportunity for us as individual human beings to learn something we can apply to our lives. So that section, um, I think I told you the story about being in Little Rock and, and uh, a, a guy who considered himself a scholar of the time. I gave, I'd given a little talk and I mentioned that Dwight David Eisenhower was the one who's sent a thousand members of the 101st Airborne so nine children could go to Central mm -hmm. High School. 
And he caught me in the hall and he said, I, I really appreciate you having said that. He said, I've always attributed it to Kennedy. And he said, I'm a Bobby Kennedy fan. I collect a lot of memorabilia. He said, I just, I've always just kind of attributed that to Kennedy. He said, but it was Eisenhower. And said, yes, it was. Mm -hmm. So, but what a great story to talk about leadership. We Absolutely. are looking at his picture on the wall here and I love that picture. You know, that's a guy who made the decision. Absolutely. Uh, said, uh, who promoted the civil rights legislation and mm -hmm. then backed it up with 101st Airborne mm -hmm. to make sure nine kids could go to high school. You know, that's a, it's a story that nobody else can claim, that one. Not that one. Yep, yep. Super duper duper economic policy. Um, one of the things that we're dealing with in this section right here is the prosperity that, mm -hmm. that all Americans um, um, it was really the first time that Americans were affluent, generally speaking. Suburbia um, started. Suburbia, home ownership, televisions, automobiles. Mm -hmm. This was an incredibly prosperous time. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all due to the policies that were put in place by Eisenhower and his cabinet. Uh, the World War II um, was a, was a uh, we, we talked about from the Mulberry uh, 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 Harbor all the way through how that started innovation, right? So, but many countries have had innovation during war. Mm -hmm. uh, America stands close to alone with the innovation post-war, including the Marshall Plan <laughs> and uh, the rebuilding of Japan mm -hmm. and then rebuilding of the homeland to turn all of that um, pounding uh, plowshares out of what we were turning into automo into tanks and planes and, and guns. Right. And, uh, you know, women workforce went from nearly zero to way high, and then now that's where the modernization of our modern economy with both people contributing mm -hmm. that came in the Eisenhower years. Well, and don't forget all the children that were being born. Yep. <laughs> I'm not forgetting this one. He was my president, 1957. So. Yeah, so we had we had a, a great increase of population as well mm -hmm. that we needed to figure out how to support. Mm -hmm. So you're right; it was very innovative, um, and um, it's I actually really enjoy mid-century modern um, architecture. And uh, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> you're making fun of me now. No, no, no. But, no, I got a time cue oh, from I'm our sorry. producer over so there. So this, this section being mid-century modern and all the things that occurred during that time period is fascinating to me. Then we need to get you to do a special thing so you can tell me what that means. Okay. But we've only got a minute and a half left okay. on this show. So then we should, we should rush through. We should probably get him out the door. So at the end we have his farewell address where he talked to us about mm. um, being concerned about the military industrial complex and he really gave us some insightful and um, prophetic even uh, thoughts about the future. Right. Um, and then um, he says goodbye to us and after his passing, we say goodbye to him. Mm. Um, and so his legacy lasted even after he left the president's office and frankly, until today. So we get to talk at this very last thing, we get to talk about how Ike and Mamie are perhaps in the news today or mm. his policies are in the news today or. We always run out of time with Dwight David Eisenhower. And There's Mamie. too much to talk about. There's too much to fit into any one program, but I think we have a really good sense of what the renovation, reinvention, your word was? Redesign. Redesign. Well, don't forget, we're going to have lots of programming going on. And, and lots of things in the community. Exactly. So we're not going away, we're just shifting around. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Thanks for your time today, Don Hammond. I've got to share time it's with you. It's been a lot of fun. It always is. Folks, I hope you appreciated an insight into what 2018 and beyond is going to look like here at the Eisenhower Presidential Library Museum and Boyhood Home. I've had a lot of fun. We're wishing you a great day. <laughs>